guys! Um, I've had a lot of positive response to my action figure modding video, so I thought what I'd do for you today is a tutorial on how I did one of my most commented on figures. Um, this is the Dragon Age Origins Liliana action figure I did. Uh, the base figure that we're going to use, I can say we now because it's like a craft show, um, is the Super Lois from the All Star line. And the first thing you're going to do is scrub her really, really well. Use a toothbrush, use soapy water, and scrub these figures well. If you've ever done any modding at all, you know that when the figures are created, they're sprayed down with a mold release so that they'll come out of the molds that they were created in, and this makes it really hard to, uh, to stick paint. So any new paint you want to put on is not going to come off really easily. So clean the figure very well. See, look, here's even a toothbrush to illustrate. It's like, oh, so clean. I cleaned her already. And the other thing you're going to do is pop off the hair and pull off the cape. Because obviously you can tell this is not the hair that we use for Liliana. So the easiest way to do this is just to take a kettle, boil some water, and dunk her in upside down. Um, this is the boil and pop method. It works for joints. It works for attached pieces like hair. I've also pre-done this through the magic of YouTube TV. So you can pull her hair off. And also we're going to pull her cape just over her head. And you can just cut the area right here. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you with scissors because it's easy, it's handy. You can also use a scalpel as long as you do so safely. So you have your cape removed, you have your hair removed. I'm going to keep both of these pieces to one side for now. You're going to have to also deal with this S. So, I find a good way to remove this. If you have some little shears like this for jewelry or for crafting or any kind of shears like that, and just pluck this S out of her chest. Okay, so it just leaves a little peg. We can fill that over with clay and smooth it down later. Alright, so the first thing we want to do... Okay, so now she's prepped for sculpting. So what I like to use to do my sculpting of the armor on her is this um, Aves Fix-It Sculpt. Ooh. I know, you need sound effects every time I do something. It's going to happen. It can't be avoided. It's a two-part sculpting putty. You want one part, two parts. That you mix together and um, it eventually, after a couple hours, dries into a rock-hard clay. Um, there are a couple of other things you can use. Abe's Epoxy Sculpt I found I had to order online. It's it's my favorite. It's what was recommended to me and I really enjoy it. But you can also use, you know, just typical green stuff with the yellow and blue compounds. It's available at most craft and hobby stores so it's a little easier to get your hands on. And Milliput also, whoop, upside down, works well for, um, for sculpting but I like the Abe's Epoxy Sculpt. The original Liliana I did, I did with green stuff because I, I didn't have epoxy sculpt yet and it was so much easier to, to reattempt this project with, with the Fix-It Sculpt. So the only things you really need for working with Fix-It Sculpt are the Fix-It Sculpt itself and water. The water um, allows you to sort of smooth over edges because you don't want fingerprint marks and stuff in your sculpt when you're putting it on. And it also allows you to um, sort of alleviate the stickiness on any tools you might be working with. I have a variety of tools that I like to work with. You get little dental tools, you can get little clay sculpting tools. Uh, they all work well. Again, this is not, you know, rocket science. I have a drawer up here that I'm rifling through that you can't see. Um, so something with a flat edge is essential. If you don't have tools specifically, I also find a folding knife is just really useful. This is my uh, sculpting Duke Duke. It's called a Duke Duke. You can see it on the blade. But it's, it's really useful for this. It's a fine edge. It's a sturdy knife. So knife, something you can poke holes with. And if you are going to invest in sculpting tools, I really recommend getting a set of these ones with rounded ball ends because they work really, really nicely for sculpting both smooth lines and blending. Okay, so for Liliana, start off with the bodice part of her armor. It's the most difficult part, um, so it's, it's sort of where you want to get right first off. Um, you're going to want to make several layers of, of leather, quote, straps to run up her body. 
So you take off a piece of your Sculpty, which you have blended nicely so you can only see one uniform color now, and flatten it out, put a little bit of water on your fingers when you're working with it, and just flatten it into a band. Again, you don't want this to be very thick. The impulse is to make it look, I think, thicker and more substantial when you're putting it on, but you don't want it to be thick because it's going to make the figure look bulky, and we know that most women in fantasy and science fiction are very petite and curvy, and you don't want her to look bulked out like a man, and that's a discussion for another day, perhaps. Oh, snap. Politics coming into it. All right, so you're going to take this and just lay it around her body. So you can see, just lay it around her back. Just pinch it off with your fingernail, or if you don't have long girly fingernails, you can use your tool to do this. So you have the length around her waist, and you're going to smooth that together. A little bit of water on your finger, and just run it together. This so when those ball tool comes in handy, just sort of run it over there, create some dents, and just sort of smooth it down. Smoothie. You want this now to be a uniform length to go all the way around her. And you also want this to be a flat edge so it looks like it's tooled rather than something you just sculpted smoothly with your hands. So this is when your edge tool comes in handy or your knife comes in handy. You're just going to cut right along the edge. Make sure you get any tool you use wet first, otherwise it will just stick to the tool and you'll end up pulling your whole sculpture apart and that will be very disappointing. I've done it. It's, it's sad. So you do that cut, comes off nicely, and I'm not going to worry about the bottom edge at this time because it's going to be completely covered up eventually. You'll notice too she has these upraised um, bits of sculpting on her and those are going to be completely covered later so I'm not too worried about those. Um, really the top edge is going to be covered too, I just like to make it neat. Then you're going to go on and sculpt your next layer. I put three or four layers on just to make it look a little a little fuller, a little more detailed. Because these figures, I've, I've made them to go to scale with the, the four figure line that came out from DC. And those are really nice detailed figures, so I don't want these to come off looking, you know, shocking by contrast. So again, just roll it out into a little line. La la la. And now I'm probably going to go ahead and fast forward this because you just saw me do this three times. easy at this stage to just take out any excess clay you had. I'm just doing a rough job to show you guys sort of what we're looking at doing. Next thing you're going to do is work on putting the bodice piece in. So you make two circles for the boobies. I know, I'm so classy and adult. Wipe some of the water off my hands again. Don't wear good clothing to do this, because, you know, I'm just wiping my uh, my watery hands on my leggings. So I wouldn't want to ruin good pants with clay, because this stuff will stain your, your area. The desk I'm working on is, you know, just a craft desk. So if you're doing this at your kitchen table or something, don't put the clay directly on it. Use a placemat or something, otherwise you'll end up with, like, icky stains on your kitchen table. Okay, so just make a circle, flatten it out. Place it over her breast. <laughs> breast. It's not provocative because it's anatomy, right? Same thing with the other one. And again, at this stage, if you want to give her some enhancements, that's your call. Um, you know, most of the women in Dragon Age are extremely well endowed, so that wouldn't be out of place, I suppose. And then, once we have these two pieces on, sort of blend them downwards a little so that they fit into the rest of your armor. Smooth them out so you don't have fingerprint marks on them. just 
try to make them equal on both sides so they come down the same length. They're not one's not uh, dipping lower than the other. And then you're going to pull off another piece of clay. And this is going to be the front part sort of 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 the whole costume. So it needs to be fairly long cuz it's going to run down her entire torso. And again, very flat cuz you don't want to build up bulk. So lay it right over the front like that. Get your handy straight edge tools out and sculpt it to the shape you want. Now the armor I'm doing is sort of a battle dress of the provocateur inspired armor um, from the Liliana Song DLC. It's basically the standard rogue leather armor from the game for female body shape. But I, th I feel like because it was, you know, her DLC armor, it's kind of her in-game iconic armor. You can also do, you know, any armor you like. If you like the two-piece, that's not a difficult one to do. It's just the skirt and the upper half, so that's fairly easy. Or the Urn of Sacred Ashes trailer is a fairly iconic Liliana armor. All nice touches to add on to her. Okay, I'm just going to get the round tool here and smooth some of my edges. And again, just going to make sure that you keep that distinction between all the pieces you put on her because when you're building actual leather armor, you can still see those pieces. You want to still be able to see them in the pieces on your figure. You want it to look as armor-like as possible. Again, not too worried about the ragged edge down here. Just going to clean it up though because we're going to be applying the skirt of the armor later. At this stage, while your clay is still wet, you can put in some details and some embellishments. Um, it's nice to do sort of the details of the rivets and stuff on the armor. Now, what I like to do is do these into the armor, like divot them into the armor, and then at a later time, I can paint gold studs over them, I can build them up with um, liquid green stuff, anything like that to make them uh, relief from the armor rather than divot it into it. But that's really up to you. The other thing you want to make sure of at this stage is that you can still move her legs because you don't want to lose articulation, that you haven't built that costume down over her legs. So we're good there. I'm just going to smooth out her back a little bit. And then you can put in some of these rivets and, and details into the costume. Now the battle dress of the provocateur sort of has a, uh, a um, leather work design into the the breast of the of the costume. So I'm just going to put that across, sort of like an extended M. You can use the pointed end of a tool, or you can use your handy straight edge again. Be that an actual straight edge or your knife. Once that's sort of scored deep enough, smooth it over. These lines will yet generally hold fairly well after the clay dries, so you don't need to worry about over smoothing and making them disappear. And if that does happen and you're disappointed with the way they look, you can always go in with a grinding or sanding tool after the clay dries and add them back in. So I'm just going to take a finer pointed round tool if I can get it out of my drawer. So I have a little end a little slightly less little end on these round tools it almost looks like a point just to build a little bit bigger into um, the divots here the other thing I just wanted to note at this time if you are having difficulty you know, layering on your clay and you find it blending together too much, 
feel free to do these layer by layer. I know that should be like obvious, I don't really need to tell you. You can feel free to do whatever you want. But just remember that if you, if you leave the clay to dry, you can layer on another layer afterwards. You don't have to do it all in one shot. The other thing I want to make sure that's done at this stage is I just want to sort of lay some clay over the cracks from her Superwoman costume because she's not Superwoman anymore. So just sort of smear it in. You don't need an actual entire piece of clay laid on. Just sort of smudge it over them so that it'll be solid. And we're actually going to put a back piece on here later after this, the rest of this assembly has dried. So it's not super crucial that it be smooth, I just want to make sure it's done. And the same thing with this divot in her chest. We're just going to sort of smudge a piece of clay into it. And then sand it down later. just sort of smooth that all over there. Okay, so that's sort of the basic bodice structure that we're doing. Um, the other thing that I'm just going to show you sort of quickly how to detail is the hair. So once you've put the hair onto your, her head and you sort of have a configuration you like, the really neat thing that you can do with the super lowest hair that we discarded earlier is instead of sculpting in all the individual lines, take advantage of the work that someone else did sculpting this and just roll, wet it and roll it onto the clay. So you can see, perhaps you can't see because it's super light, but you sort of get the hair texture onto there. So you're going to finish sculpting your bodice. She also gets her hair sculpt. Um, shoulder pads, the back of her costume, uh, boots and gloves, sort of all sculpted up, built up from this skin tight costume. This is why this is a really nice base figure because it's a, basically a skin tight costume. So you can build on it without too much. And the next part we're going to do, if you leave this to dry overnight, you'll have something that looks like this. I know, if you were a kid in the 90s, I hope you got that reference in Canada you watch TVO Kids. Now you'll see here that I've sculpted in the rest of her bodice. I've done shoulder pads. I've done gauntlets over her arms, which is just the same method that we talked about on the body. We just wrapped clay over and added a couple of little lines in to enhance them for detail. Same thing on her legs. Just wrapped clay over the original boots, added lines in to detail it, added kneecaps over, and added shoulder caps over the over uh, the shoulders and the thing you want to make sure with these two is that you still have full articulation retained you don't want to build these shoulder caps so that they stop or block her her ball joint here you can see the back of the costume has gone over top and that attaches to the breast piece we built before also in signature dragon age style make sure you add the collar in you know it separates the head from the body for animations but it's also on all of the characters and you can see her hair sculpt here with that super lois built in and the braid on the side, signature Liliana. On her legs, because she has the leggings, um, there's a little bit of liquid green stuff that I've painted on. Um, it's from Citadel Paints line. It's just sort of, um, it's, it's meant to fill in cracks, but it adds a little bit more texture so that when we paint over it without actually, we don't want some full sculpt on here, but we want it to look like it's just not bare skin. And that cape that we saved earlier, has turned into a skirt. Just cut it with ordinary scissors, three pieces in the in the front and about five pieces in the back just to create that leather skirt. And on the side where she had solid pieces in the costume, I've actually used Aomer's cape from Lord of the Rings and just cut out a square and glued it to the side. When you're attaching the skirt, you have to wait until the clay is fully dry, like your first bodice piece, then super glue the skirt across her waist and hips and then once that super glue has dried, build the belt in the same way we built the rest of it by laying it over top of the skirt to solidly fix it down. So in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you painting. Um, yeah, I'm going to wait for the next part. I'm not going to elaborate on it now because then I'll end up redundant. All right. Thanks for watching.